Paul Sakai and zero coming from the D-line. Another interesting fact, Seattle Sakai has 23 throws and Chain Lightning has 42. Sakai, always known for their quick movement. They're scoring very efficiently here. Only 23 throws and eight goals. That's about a goal every three throws, just under. Karlinski with it in the middle, finds Murray. Murray dumps to Holt. Holt to Tickham. Tickham up the line to Kosednar. Kosednar calls a foul. Marked by Michael Spear. Kosednar puts the flick. Danny Karlinski, little too far. Sails just out the back. That would have been Karlinski's second goal of the game. That's a tough throw by Kasednar. Not technically, but for the receiver and the space that he's trying to put it in, he's throwing that right down the line. And coming off that foul, it seemed like he had a little bit of adrenaline going for him. Wow. Great grab by Michael Spear in the middle of the field. Shoulder high pancake layout. Elliot Erickson gives the disc right back to Sakai with short field. Phil Murray scores the goal in the end zone. The offense able to get the disc back and score. After we were just talking about defensive possessions, Elliot Erickson throws that one right back to the Sakai team. Big chest high layout from Andrew Hollingsworth, excuse me, Michael Spear, and then Erickson, a little bit of a miscommunication there with Julian Dahl. Thought Dahl was cutting up line, or thought Dahl was cutting backfield. Dahl decided he was cutting up line. Just a bit of hesitation. Erickson couldn't find Dahl. You wonder if it's, as we were talking about before the game, Chain saying that they really haven't played together with all of these guys, so they really haven't gotten the reps together. So you're probably gonna see that happen once or twice in these early games, these Thursday games. It's actually very interesting about that point, Jackson, is that looking at our League Vine stats, they're counting points played, and Nick Lance actually has the most points played for the Chain Lightning team as a player who's important on both the offensive and the defensive line. Simon Montague with the pull. Gets it just past midfield. Asa Wilson streaking deep. Swanson doesn't hit him. Finds Jay Clark. Now Tanell with it. On the sidelines, Tanell dumps to Swanson in the middle of the field. Around to Inselman. Inselman looking for the end zone, looking downfield. Flicks to Jay Clark. Just at the brick, marked by Matty Zemmel. And Inselman with the backhand fake, marked by Joe Sefton. Inselman to CK. CK to Inselman. Backfield, Inselman points. And can't connect. From our vantage point, it looked like Asa Wilson had a beat on that. Looked like he was gonna come down with it. He points, Wilson goes. Wilson's there. He just doesn't read it. A tough throw to read. Especially in this wind. Yeah. That, that was a downwind throw, so it probably sailed a little bit further than what Wilson was thinking. And Matty Zemmel leans back and looks for Tim Sliva. Sliva. Can't read it, so Dylan Tunnell picks up. Sam CK, Swanson with the drop. First drop we've seen this game. 
Sakai now has a short field to work with. Looking for a chance to break, take the lead 10-6. Sefton picks up, marked by Clark. Inside break, goes right through Matty Zemmel's hands. Tanell picks up, finds CK, swings it over to the sideline. CK to Swanson, middle of the field to Wilson. Matty Zemmel nearly an amazing D. Inselman unmarked with it in the middle of the field. Inselman back with it. Montague trailing Inselman. Tanell marked by Sefton to Inselman. Inselman backhand to Exton Titcomb. Sam CK dumped to Swanson. Swanson has nothing, then throws around to Asa Wilson. Wilson's second turn of the point. Wow, a lot of unforced errors coming from both sides. That's two drops for Chain this point, one for Sakai. Feely with it on the sideline to Montague. Big layout from Jay Clark. Montague holsters. Feely barrel rolls in midair, saves possession. Exton Titcom throws it just past the diving Inselman. Sefton with it on the sideline, marked by Poole. Sliva, the, what was that? Oh my, Tim Sliva pivots to his right side and throws a backhand, has a forehand pivot, throws a backhand, and Eddie Feely goes up, toes the line. That was fun to watch. Air bounce around into the wind. Feely goes up, toes the line, and then decides to tumble. <laughs> I don't know if he needed to do that. He was about four feet in bounds, but it still looked pretty cool. And Chain Lightning takes a timeout. Their first timeout of the second half after a long point of a lot of mental errors. They really need to regroup themselves. There were a lot of dives on that point. Bodies flying everywhere. Yeah, both teams were picking up the intensity on defense, really putting their bodies on the line. Matty Semmel almost a D. Matty Feely barrel roll grab. Chain trying to regroup. Trying to focus. This game is huge as far as the tournament goes. Whoever loses this game will have to play an extra game and win that game. They basically have to win out if they lose this game to continue playing at Nationals. They will go down into either Pool G or H, which are the two pools with the lower seeds. And then the winner of first and second place in both of those pools will have a play-in to get to quarters. They will have to play the last place team in pools E and F. Sakai looking to extend their lead. They lead 10-6 right now. Reed Koss with the pull. Nick Lance takes it down. Centers to Inselman. Back to Lance. To Inselman. Marked by Duncan Lynn. First year player on Sockeye. Out of UW. Greg Swanson with it on the sidelines. Excuse me, in the middle of the field. Double zero. Ben Spear with it. Sam Gaynor marked by Harkness. Step their own brick to Lance. Lance with the slow wind up, puts it to Ben Spear. 
Reeve Koss gets up and D's it. Seattle Sockeye defense still without a turnover. As we saw that long point was. I don't, I don't know no, if Koss deed it. What was that? I, I was correcting myself. I think that long point that we just saw was Seattle on defense. Oh, right, because Maddie, Maddie, Maddie had two turns at that point. Jacob Speedle with it on the sideline. Sam Harkness dumps to Kinley right at midfield. Back to Harkness. Right at center. Reed Koss falls down. I think he's calling something. Foul called. Yes, foul called. Harkness to Barrick. Catches it past the diving insulin. Barrick's throw's not going to come back. Chain's going to get the disc just past the brick on the sidelines as the disc sails out of bounds. Dylan Tunnell will have possession marked by Reed Koss. Chain Lightning needing to score this. Don't want to dig themselves in a deeper hole. Tunnell to Lance, marked by Lynn. Spear falls forward and catches it in the backhand. Speedle runs through Swanson and gets the D. No dive necessary. Kinley to Harkness to Lynn. Back to Harkness. Around Joe Sefton. Around to Joe Sefton. This goes back on a travel call. Sam Gaynor marking Sam Harkness. Travels upheld. Oh, nearly came back. It's really unfortunate that he didn't catch that because we would have had a great situation of even with the catch, it wouldn't have counted since Frank Devin Barrett's jump from out of bounds. But now Chain Lightning, offense back with possession. Oh, Nick Lance, so close. Great job by Lance running that down just out of his reach. Greg Swanson with a huck, switching the field. Koss with it, marked by Tunnell. Spell count getting higher. Koss swings to Sefton. believe that is a contested stall. Observer of rules. It was not a stall. So it goes to Sefton no in the middle, marked by Gaynor. Sefton to Harkness, up the line to Harkness. Gaynor calls the travel on Sefton. Kinley deep downfield marked by Sam CK. Sefton up line to Harkness. Trying to jam it up that sideline. Sakai loves their handler movement. Sefton was tripped up by Gaynor. No contest. 
Tyler Kinley's hands. Swanson to pick it up. Craig Swanson picks up, marked by Harkness. Around to Nick Lance. Nick Lance with the low inside out backhand. Inselman inside out to Sam CK. That stops the chain bleeding. Chain scores the offensive point. They trail Sockeye 10-7. That point really showed a huge difference in the first half of this game compared to the second. Not only with a lot more turnovers from both sides, but we're also seeing a lot more calls. Some travel calls and contested stalls and whatnot. Yeah, the pace of the game is really slowed down. Exactly. We got, the, we got the first half done in about 30 minutes. This is the result of Chain Lightning not wanting to give up yet. I think this slow style of play favors Chain. Sockeye just always wants to go, 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 go. Quick movement. They don't want to hold the disc for longer than two seconds if they don't have to. They'll always hit the open guy. It seems like their run of four in a row happened in about four minutes. No line for Sockeye, Murray, Castine, Holt, Caldwell, Karlinski, Vero Titcom, and Kasednar. Julian Dahl with the outside end pull. Just five yards outside the back line. Holt, Karlinski on the goal line. Up the line to Kosednar. Kosednar, big forehand fake to Caldwell. Caldwell inside backhand. Sakai reeling it, really working it up that break side sideline. They're not getting a lot of yards but it's always to the break side of the field, meaning the receiver downfield has the advantage. If the thrower can get it past the mark as they're trying to take away half the field, but so far being unsuccessful. One more break throw from Nate Castine. Castine rifles a 34 yard inside out backhand to Adam Holt. I think they threw five inside out backhands in a row on that point. Just marching it up the break side. The chain wants to win this game. They can't allow breaks like that to happen. They gotta hold the live side. Chain has only broke Sockeye one time this game and it came at 3-3. And the last time that Chain broke Sockeye, Sockeye went on a 4-0 run. O-line for Chain, Inselman, Tunnell, Clark, Lance, Swanson, Poole, and Wilson. D-line for Sockeye. Castine, Sefton, Barich, Montague, Harkness, Koss, and Sewell. Koss with the pull right in the back end zone. Inselman thought it was going to go out. It doesn't. Sockeye in a zone look, Lance with it, marked by Barrick. Lance breaks inside to Lance, Lance to Swanson. Swanson to Lance, Lance upfield to Tunnell. Lance inside.
Lance over on the sidelines to Tunnell. Chain being patient. Sockeye forcing Chain into a lot of throws. Greg Swanson with it now. It's Barrick, Montague, Murray, and Castine. Very tall cup, four-man cup. Swanson trapped on the sideline. Swanson calls foul. No contest. It's going to come in on zero. See Sockeye really trying to take away the field of vision of Swanson. Keeps their arms up. Casting sheets over to the inside. They find Tunnell. Now Clark with it just outside the end zone. Clark to Swanson. Still in their four man cup. Lance to Clark. Clark to Lance. Lance to Clark, just outside the end zone. Sockeye still in their zone. Now with Swanson, Swanson finds Tunnell for a goal hammer over the top. It's a big point for Chain. Don't want to give up any more breaks. They still trail by three. I wonder if it's about time that Chain starts pressing a little, starts bringing some of their O-line players, their more consistent players, like Dylan Tunnell, uh, Nick Lance over to the D-line. Well, that's usually a good move when the defense is getting the disc, but they're not converting. But Sockeye has just kept possession on their offense. Chain Lightning really just unable to force any turns it looks like Sockeye's offense can do what they want at will, and Sockeye's defense is just very much directing where they want the chain lightning offense to go. Yeah, a lot of the articles uh, that were written about Sockeye and why they have a shot at winning the title is because they're really ahead strategically, especially in their offense. They really have their timing down better than anyone. They know where each other are on the field. They play a lot of mini, which forces you to put it in really tight, small spaces. So it's very difficult to generate turnovers, especially when a team is practicing on a smaller field, and then they're allowed all this space to throw it in. Nick Lance with the outside in pull. It rides the win. Karlinski, Karlinski to Holt. Marked by Russell Snow. First time we see him on today. Holt to Karlinski. Back to Holt. Holt. An offensive that mistake from Sockeye. That is exactly what Shane needs if they want to come back in this game. Nick Lance picked up. He's marked by Caldwell. Lance around to Lou, goes up. Very awkward jump and landing, but it results but in it a goal works. and a break. That's exactly what Chain needs. Everything seemed to be working for Chain that game. Holt just tried to pancake and didn't have his hands on top, so they flipped around and the disc hit the ground. And Lou goes up off his right foot and catches it with his right hand which is probably why he came down awkwardly and is shaking his foot there. Just feels really weird to land like that. Chain's defense, though, give partial credit to the pole. A good pole can really do a lot for your defense. Sockeye fielding that one well in the back of their end zone, and their D-line had hustled down, and they were all set up when that first throw was coming off. It's that kind of attitude switch that this D-line has to make if they're really going to pull themselves back in this game. They can't rely on more mistakes from Sockeye. That was the first point, excuse me, that was the second point that Sockeye has given Chain a turn, given them an opportunity to break them. Chain's still yet to generate Ds. There's Nikki Spiva with a pull. Spencer Wallace brings it down, chains down 
on the pole. Karlinski with it on the side, marked by Byron Liu. Must not be too shaken up after that awkward landing. I really like this matchup of Jason Simpson and Moses Rifkin. I'm sure these two guys two have veterans. marked up against each other many times here in Sarasota. Many times. Now Murray with it in the middle. Karlinski to casting to Caldwell. Caldwell fakes the hammer over the top. Goes to Murray on the sidelines, about 15 yards outside the end zone. Dumps to Kosednar. Kosednar looking for a swing around to the other side. Sees Karlinski. Back to Kosednar. Kosednar to Karlinski. They're losing ground now, about 25 yards outside the end zone. Kar Kosednar marked by Monforti. Now Karlinski up the line. Inside throw to Spencer Wallace. And Spencer Wallace that bottles I, it. There's no ruling on the field. Now the observer rules out of bounds. It bounced off of Spencer Wallace's hand, and he did have a foot down, but then when it was fluttering in the air, he had to catch it, and as he caught it, he brought his back foot up. Oh, I don't, I, I don't think that was the right call of the observer. I think he had his foot down. You can see right there, it stopped. But ruling on the field stands. It was a turnover. Sockeye's gonna need to get a D if they want that goal. Now Spear over to Robert Runner. Jason Simpson marked by Rifkin, Topher's favorite matchup. Simpson goes around. Not high enough for Nick Lance. It's the second time they've overthrown Lance going deep. Wind starting to pick up here. Kosednar in the middle of the field. Up the line to Kosednar. Kosednar puts it to Rifkin. Rifkin and Simpson. And Rifkin prevails. Chain not able to capitalize on the obs observer's ruling. Just not quite clicking. They had the disc, they just needed to be a little patient. Although patience is really not something that Chain has made one of their their main strategies. Always been a team to prefer the deep shot over working it. The turnover by Simpson was unfortunate, but I really like the way that Chain Lightning's defense came out that point. They were looking a lot stronger on their downfield matchups. They forced a lot of passes that Sakai's offense hadn't really had to do up to this point. The turnover, a result of a bit of wind kind of catching the underside of that disc. Sockeye leads 12-9. They are pulling to chain. Again, the winner of this game will move on to the power pool. They will have a much easier road to bracket play. Other pools today, Revolver. Pool B has gone to seed. Revolver, or excuse me. Ring upset machine, so Ring takes the second seed out of the B pool. It goes Revolver, Ring, Machine, Madison Club. Back to the game, Mark Pool with it on the sideline. Marked by Ali Lennon to Jay Clark. Over to Sammy CK. Now Tanel with it, 25 yards out, marked by Speedel. Swanson marked by Zemmel. Dumps to Tanell in the middle of the field. Tanell rifles a flick to Inselman. That, <laughs> that is one accurate throw right there. Inselman finally being on the receiving end of one of those goals. The forehand huck. Chain Lightning still within two late in this game. Not a bad position for them to be in. Again, it's very reliant on their defense. 
to bring intensity and slow down that Sakai offense. This break that Chain is trying to get, this is the big one. They need it right now. It'll be going upwind. And then the next point, they'll, if they do get the break, then they'll be coming downwind. It's much easier to get a turn or generate a turn or take a turn or take the disc from chain or from Sakai. D-line for chain, Andrew Hollingsworth, Michael Spear, Michael Aronson, Elliot Erickson, Russell Snow, Frank Wooten, and Joel Wooten. I have not seen this combination of players on the field yet today. Offensive line for Sakai, Phil Murray, Mike Caldwell. From here, that looks like Exton Titcom. I think it's, I believe it's Barrow. Barrow Titcom. They all look the same. All those. All the Titcoms. All those five the ultimate five folk. Five siblings. There's also Adam Holtz, Spencer Wallace, Carlin. Danny Karlinski, Chris Kasednar. And Danny Karlinski getting the travel called as he was going to go for the centering pass. Holt to Kosednar. Things getting a little stagnant. Swung over to, to Wallace. Chain throwing a bit of a poach look on their of their own. They're really they're putting Greg's or excuse me, Michael Frank. Aronson. That's Frank on the mark. Yeah, Michael Aronson on the mark, and then Frank Wooten hanging out deep. He's kind of patrolling the back. There's Joel Wooten, his brother, on the sideline, and on the other sideline is Andrew Hollingsworth. Push pass over the top, Karlinski. That is a difficult catch. Low backhand to Phil Murray. Chain thinks it was ruled down. A little stoppage of play. Observer rules it was up. This will be in Murray's hands. Unfortunate for Chain, if they had let play continue, they would have had the disc. But because there was a call, it stopped at Phil Murray's catch. Now Kosednar with it on the sidelines. High release lefty backhand, Mike Caldwell. High release lefty to high release lefty, Danny Karlinski, second goal of the game. That is a veteran throw right there. I don't think Caldwell's first year on Sockeye, he would have been throwing that. I don't but think even in his fifth year he would have been throwing <laughs> that. The lefty backhands are a very new throw. Especially in this wind, and it was inside out. That was perfect. Sakai leads 13-10, looking to take a spot in a power pool, make their road easier to bracket play. Chain looking to dig themselves out of a hole. They do not want to fall to the lower pools. As we've been over, it is much harder to come back from being down the lower pools then win the play-in. Tyler Kinley with a pull. Inselman, re no, Lance receives, centers to Swanson. Sakai in a man set. Lance with it, Lance fakes the big forehand. The Tunnel, Eddie Feely, almost the layout. D, wide open Inselman, elects to not throw it. The disc is clearly taco. The players are trying to fix it as they're being stalled. Tunnel rips a flick. Tim Sleva, Phantom D, didn't quite D it, but looked like he was going to. 
Yeah, that was something where because of the edge being down into the wind coming towards it, it really forced it into the ground instead of, as I'm sure Dylan Tonell was intending, to lead Asa Wilson into the end zone. That disc falls short to the defensive advantage. And we see Chain Lightning really trying to keep Sakai down on that backhand sideline as the wind is picked up in this point. Feely with a smooth throw to Exton Titcom who puts it up to Spidal. Spidal boxes out Asa Wilson, holds position. The wind knocks it down and puts it right in front of Speedle's face. Sakai gets a break. They take the lead 14-10 on the cusp of getting that spot in the power pool. It's not over yet, but it's looking a little grim for Chain. The other matchup in Pool C, GOAT taking on Sub-Zero. GOAT is winning that game very easily, 10 to four. GOAT's only loss coming to Sakai in that very, very windy second game of the pool. A game that really could have gone to anyone, given a few different lucky bounces or hits of the wind. So GOAT in Pool D, double wide held seed. Bravo did as well. Truck stop and Pony did. So everyone held seed. How about that? In pool A, Rhino is up on Boost Mobile, 9-5, Ironside. Commanding lead 13-6 over Furious George. Back here, Chain and Sakai. Inselman takes down the pole just outside the end zone. Swanson swings it over to Clark. Back to Swanson, marked by Feely. Physical mark. Breaks around to Lance. Next gen on next gen, marked by Simon Montague. Sammy CK dumps to Lance. Lance to pool, across the field, upfield to Inselman. Inselman throwing that flick. That was the first time he threw the flick going in that direction, and the wind knocked it down. So Inselman does not remain perfect on his forehand hucks for this game. Feely picks up for Sakai. Oh! Great play by Sam CK to block the huck coming from Reed Koss. And Jay Clark lays out from the throw from Jared Enzelman. There's discussion on the field. I don't know what it could be about. Tyler Kenley might be calling a travel, but what a play by Sam CK to keep his chain lightning team alive. That might be one of those instances where knowing the other team and their habits really came into play. Sam CK on Sakai for a long, long time. Polly knows some of Reed Koss's tendencies like throwing the huck. Discussion still on the field. I'm unsure what the ruling is. I think it's a travel on Jared Enzelman's throw. So Enzelman will have possession of the disc. And Chain is just outside their goal line. Enzelman in the middle of the field to CK. and leads Enzelman up the line. Enzelman fired up, 
Spiking the disc right in front of Kinley. And Chain Lightning still in this game. 14-11. We have talked about how it's very difficult for a team to come back from being in those lower pools. One team that did make quite the run was the 2004 Sockeye team. They ended up playing in a quarters play-in where they had lost a pike. They didn't make it to the power pools. They had to play in that play-in. They beat double wide 15-9. Then they beat Ring of Fire 15-13. Avenged their loss to Pike, 15-13 in semis, and ended up beating Jam 16-15 on double game point. Was that so their first championship win? That was the first, that was the 2004. And the run of 2004, 2006, and 2007 championships from Sakai. Yes. So that sort of ignited the fire for Sakai, brought them onto the national scene really were a powerhouse for a long time. So the tournament isn't over for Chain if they lose this game. They can be done. Sockeye's done it before. Of course, that team had incredible players. Chase Sparling Becker playing with Rhino. Karlinski with the backhand to Phil Murray. Looked like it hurt, but Murray's fine. I think that's going to be a strip call, but chain players might be arguing that it wasn't any of their team that caused the strip, or they're arguing that he dropped it. From that vantage point, it sort of looked like he dropped it. I mean, he had, he had a good spot on the disc. Now oh, that looks like a foul. Looked like Joel Wooten came in and just hacked him on the arm. A lot of discussion on the field. Going to take another look at this play. Slow it down a bit. We'll let you at home make the call. Pretty clear to me that Joel Wooten fouled him. And Sockeye takes the timeout just outside their goal line, wanting to set something up where they can do that. We would like to thank our sponsor, Elemental Technologies, for encoding all of the next gen material you've seen. Without them, we would not be able to bring you this high quality of ultimate to your viewing pleasure right in your own home. Not to worry folks, we will make that trip to Sarasota for you and you can stay in the comfort of your living room. teams are set up. Phil Murray with the disc in the middle of the field. Can't get it at the front of the stack. Goes for the swing to Adam Holt. It catches the wind and Chain Lightning catches a break. Nick Lance is going to pick it up. Switches the field to Frank Wooten. Hollingsworth. Hollingsworth putting it up to Joel Wooten. And Chain Lightning stays alive for one more point. 14 to 12 after the timeout call.
Chain has, hasn't given up yet. Get their first, first break in a while. D-line for Chain, Locky, Lou, Erickson, Spiva, Simpson, Dahl, and Lance. O-line for Sockeye, Murray, Wallace, Vero, Tickham, Karlinski, Kastein, Kosednar, and Moses Rifkin. Rifkin and Caldwell, the only two players left on the, the team that in 2004 did come back from the quarters playing. Jason Simpson's on the line. I really hope he's going to mark Moses Rifkin. I'm sure he will. He did last time, right? Although Rifkin did get the better of him. Spiva with the pull. Oh. Kosednar with it in the middle of the field. Marked by Simpson. Sorry, Topher. A round break to Phil Murray. Murray oh. to Wallace. Erickson almost gets the D. Casting to Karlinski. Murray trying to streak deep. Takes what Lockie gives him. Lockie with a big hack. Murray calls foul. No contest from Lockie. Rifkin, deepest cutter downfield. There's Casting up line. Casting puts it up to Karlinski, and Sockeye takes the win 15 12. Sockeye took the early, or was broken at 3 3 and then went on a four-point run to take the game. And they really never looked back from there. Again, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Elemental Technologies, for encoding the game for you. Also like to thank our crew. Bird's Eye View is Aki Odera. Snake in the Grass, Brian Bedord. Tim Gilligan and the Crow's Nest. Director Vin Bowie, instant replay specialist Kimber Coles, executive producer Kevin Minderhout. I'm Jackson Kelsey. He's Topher Davis. Join us tomorrow at 9.30 to catch some open power pool. Me and Topher will be here with you. It, well, it actually it could be at 12.15. We are undecided. So please come back with us tomorrow for more exciting action from the 2012 USA Ultimate Club Championships. Vin, you want to take us out? <laughs>